So how many of you feel like uh, graduation is coming up and you're not sure if you're going to have a job and you're not sure if your skills make you employable enough to not go on to get an MBA or go to grad school or do something else and you don't have enough capital to start your own business, you know, that there's all kinds of worries. This is called senioritis. This is a very typical very normal, very understandable uh, feeling because of what's going on in the world today. And um, COVID-19, this bizarre crisis um, that's at the cellular level that we can't see but is keeping us away from each other, um, you know, doing the social distancing and uh, to be responsible, to be loving, you stay away from the family members who are vulnerable. It's all very counterintuitive. But one of the things, one of the offshoots that's happening is um, an opportunity for listening. There's the, the birds you can hear more than ever. You can uh, adjust your patterns of sleep in ways that maybe you haven't been able to before. Um, but probably the most important focus most important uh, aspect of this time is the opportunity to be able to focus. Um, you know, focusing requires uh, that you limit a number of stimuli that are, you know, usually bothering you or asking for your attention, you know, pulling you away from thinking about just one thing. So when you think about um, focusing, and the importance of focusing, you might think, yeah, 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 you know, when I'm down to the wire and I have to get something done, well, I'm really focused, or when the traffic is terrible and I need to weave through all those cars and the irresponsible drivers on the road, maybe you're one of them, I don't know. You have to focus. And that focus is, uh, is not something we're used to. And it's scary to realize that you know, wow, I actually wasn't able to keep my mind on that. My mind kept wandering. I didn't really have control over my thoughts and over my feelings. Um, emotionally, we can get hooked. You know, somebody very close to us who we have issues with says something and they know exactly which button to push, you know, to trigger us to feel a certain way. And once we're triggered, it's very hard sometimes, uh, I'm speaking personally, uh, for me to get out of that feeling, for me to not be triggered, first of all, that's difficult, but once I'm triggered, to then get back to my normal, to my, uh, let's call it happy place, to my stasis, to my feeling of comfort. So um, I've been fascinated by the possibility to stay focused and to exercise focus for my uh, personal health. And uh, I'm not always successful, for sure. I'm, it's always a battle. And uh, not a violent battle, but it's a struggle, let's put it that way. It's a challenge. And the mind has to notice another part of the mind. So I think that what I want to uh, suggest here uh, with regard to music and health is one of the key aspects of music that uh, often goes on uh, ignored, which is its ability to keep us focused in one emotional state, focused on one sound, focused on one moment of sound that, um, you know, a song is like a series of moments, right? We can't hear a whole song in one moment. It takes three minutes, four minutes, five minutes to hear a song. The first time you hear a song, if they play the first five seconds, that moment of five seconds, that's not the song. The next 20 seconds, that not, that's not the song. You've only heard a verse, you haven't heard the chorus. So a song can only be experienced over time. And we are pulled in by the lyrics and the, and the texture and the timbre and the instrumentation and the person's voice and the singer's voice if they're, if they're singing or the instrument's melody or a certain 
quality of harmony or a rhythm, something is capturing our attention. And so music has this incredible power to focus us when most of us, um, barring the amazing Tibetan lamas I've spent time with, uh, most of us don't have the power to focus our minds without some form of stimulus. You know, in meditation, they talk about focusing on the breath. So, great. You focus on the breath. Well, some people are confused. Do I focus on the breath at the tip of my nose coming in and out? Or do I focus on the rise and fall of my abdomen? Or do I focus on my lungs filling with air? I mean, you say to focus on the breath, but the breath is happening all over my body. That's too vague. You know, should I keep my eyes open or closed? Um, you know, just relax and focus on your breath is a very vague instruction. In fact, for some people, they find it quite anxiety producing. Focus on the breath. It's hard. Finally, after some years of being somewhat frustrated with this focus on the breath, and I'd be sitting in a meditation session, uh, wondering, okay, what should I try? Should I try my stomach this time, my abdomen? Should I try my breath? Should I pay attention to my lung? Finally, the meditation teacher said, just focus on the sensation of air as it's passing through just the tip of your nostril, both on the way in and on the way out. Keep your mouth closed, your tongue touching the palate, and keep your shoulders uh, straight and a little bit back. Keep your neck just tilted slightly forward, your spine straight, your hands one, so one inside the other, they're usually the, uh, the right inside the left with the thumbs touching. It's uh, actually called the seven point, mind, seven point uh, meditation posture. And so this posture, uh, created by Varochana, this uh, Sanskrit meditator scholar, is meant to uh, induce physically a certain stasis, a certain possible of continuity of a moment. So if you can focus for three moments, you might be able to focus for six. If you can focus for six, you might be able to focus for nine or 12. Uh, there's no guarantees though, and it takes a lot of practice. And we don't get training in normal school. In normal public school or even private school, they don't train us in how to focus. And so this is a real challenge for a lot of us who want to be able to focus on one task, not just when it's down to the wire and we have a deadline and we're all stressed out. We want to be able to focus our energy and our attention on a project, like an entrepreneurial project, a fantastic, you know, comic that we're doing. We want to finish drawing something or we have a photography project. We want to put our pictures together from last summer. To stay focused on a, to on a topic or a subject, this requires training. And uh, if you don't have the training, if that's too stressful to even think about the training, then music can be a fantastic tool for helping you to focus. And how that works is what we're going to explore in these next few uh, videos. So we're gonna talk about, think about, and try on different ways that sound and music can help us to focus our attention and practice the ability of our minds focusing on one thing. Because no matter how stressed you are about the job market and how difficult these times are with COVID and so forth, there's never a shortage of opportunity of time to increase your ability to focus whether it's relaxation or solving a problem, but harnessing your own mind, which is your greatest resource, uh, might be a very good use of time during COVID, during any time, but certainly during COVID. So we're going to look at this and I hope you find our focus on focus useful. Thanks guys.